He's absolutely Jason. He's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten up the darkest rainy day. He's funny and loves movies. He's smart and he's a Jew. He's an actor and an activist and wants to hear from you. Hey everybody, it's Jason Stewart, and I'm here with Fred, Fred Zinnerman. Yes, Fred Zinnerman. Uh, hi, nice to meet you, Fred. <laughs> Stan Zinnerman. That's my father. Welcome to Absolutely Jason Stewart. Is it? No, it's not. Fred Zinnerman is the famous director who directed um, uh, one of my favorite movies, The Beach, uh, From Here to Eternity. Oh, okay. Yes, and also Julia. Which why I did he not help me in my career? I know. Why did I, I, would, I, ha- why did I have to sleep with all those other people? I, okay, yeah. who did you sleep with to help All you? of them, the whole gay mafia, I was uh. there. Oh, just I, had, the I had a dream, though, Did you? when I was uh, growing up in Detroit. To uh, I had read about Alan Carr's uh, oh. famous disco ball, and it had a disco in his in basement. In his basement. And I was like, how do I get there? How do I get there? Never made it. That was sort of an incredible film. We right. saw this film at Outfest a couple days ago called... Um, what, some, Something with Alan Carr. Yeah, Alan yeah. Carr. And Alan yeah. Carr, for those who don't know who he was, was a very big uh, movie producer who produced Grease and Grease 2 and Where the Boys Are 2 and and a couple other films that probably weren't as good. He, he had this sort of Hollywood overblown kind of way of doing stuff. And we saw this documentary, and it was sort of amazing. And, uh, Did he do Can't Stop the Music? Can't Stop the Music, yeah. yes. Nancy Walker. Director. Nancy Walker's uh, 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 fiasco. Yes. I, did, I told you my little story about no. that. No, were you is in that, it? No, I actually had a friend that was in the movie, a comedian who, who was a juggler, who I got a part in it. I helped him get it. And uh, it was, I don't know how we did. We called and we tried. We, I pretended I was his agent or his assistant. So Steve Gutenberg of you. Oh, is that what he did? Yeah, that's how he got started. He would like go into another office at Paramount and say, hey, I'm Steve Gutenberg's agent. Can I get him seen? And then he'd go into the next room and audition. Oh, my God. And the rest is history. Yeah. yeah. There you go. We had a pretty big career for a long time. Um, so I got him in, and then I went down to the set with him the day he was shooting. And Nancy Walker's there. And, of course, I knew her, the mother on Rhoda. Mm-hmm. And I'm seeing, and she's sitting in a chair, and she's hardly talking to anybody. I'm thinking, this is weird. And then I went over to her, and she was reading John Cheever's short stories. Now, so I bought that book, and I've been in love with that book because of her. Oh. And I've read these great American stories. I think I should go back to it and see if I can make any little films out of them. Yeah. Because there's just wonderful stories. And she didn't, and you could see when you saw the movie that she really didn't seem to be really interested in at all directing it. Yeah, how did she get that job? I, it, it seems all bizarre. Busi- it seems so not her genre. To and do a complete- big musical. And well, she came from that. Big she musicals? came from Broadway musicals. But not movie musicals. No, but she came, She had done some of them. Okay. But she, that's where she came from, was Broadway. So okay. I, 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 I got to get off on that tangent. Because we went to go see the movie, and we were both there. And my good friend, uh, David Permit, he uh, produced David. it. I love David. So... Um, I gotta say, I've known you a lot, a yeah, lot of years. A lot of we, years. We are like six degrees of each other. I know, it's so crazy. We just that we've never worked together. Never worked no together. Series? No, no series. not no, no. I would have no, killed. Okay. Are you kidding? Yeah, okay. I would have loved if I would have known that you were so cool. I would have called you and hung out and stalked yeah, you. Yeah. Um, but now you're going to. Oh, okay. I would no. I would no, love no stalking. I uh, know stalking, but okay. I would love to work with you. I will. And back um, at you. I've known of you and. Do we you know Lois Bromfield. Oh, of course. Yeah. I still talk to her. So Lois Bromfield, wonderful, wonderful comedian, oh one of the funniest people that y- I have to say who I love, lives in Germany now with her girlfriend, and she still writes, she still does stand-up, and she's just so funny, and I was such a big fan of hers at the Where comedy store. Remember the oh. Irma, Irma, Irma oh, her, her video, look it up, because it, it's one of the classics. What she is it called? She did for Mike Nesmith. Uh, TV Parts. Yes, and I was blown away, and was like, I've got to find that girl, found her, and it's like, I have to develop a TV show for you. She just makes you piss in your pants she's so funny. so funny and then we ended up on Roseanne together and I, I I supported her in that I kept going with her to all the uh, the the screen the, the Taping? s- tapings of I the show I remember you that's where I went yes. with it because she was so nervous about getting this job and she was wanted to be a writer she wasn't a writer she was just a well, funny s- fucking stand can I swear yeah you can okay. take anyone. yeah it doesn't okay. matter we're on cable we okay. can do whatever we want okay. or the internet or we're on something I don't even know what we're in I'm trying to see if... The, the because Roseanne and Tom brought on, when the year I was there, we had 21 writers, but a lot of them were stand-up comics, like Norm MacDonald and Laura Keitlinger, had Pat Bullard, who had uh, never done any writing. Carrie Snow, Kathy yeah, Ladman. Was, was Kathy me, Ladman? Yeah. I mean, just... And what, what I loved about Roseanne in those days, I have to say, is that she was incredibly uh, supportive of other comedians. Yeah. 
just but way they weren't writers so no. my writing partner jim and i they we broke up into different rooms because you had so many people in one room that uh-huh. was the year of the t-shirts you know that story no no uh the very first day they had us line up and they said we don't want to know your name because what if we have to fire you so we've all given you numbers and they had numbers on each t-shirt and we had no. to line up no and was this a joke up. they thought it was funny i thought it was funny all the other writers thought it was insulting and not insulting. I think it was Terrible. frightening. Yes. I mean, the idea that you would just that that you could and, and it was a reality. She yeah, was so, known. So for I, that. my birthday's the thirteenth. So I was like, I snuck in. Thirteenth of what? October. January. Oh, thanks. We so that's okay. Coming. We can share the T-shirt. So I still have the T-shirt. I got it. Uh, but the the word on the street when you got a job on Roseanne was, don't let her see the whites of your eyes, or she'll say you you're fired. You're gone. So when we'd go down to the rehearsals, I'd always find the tallest guy, like Pat Bullard, and kind of stand behind him so that she wouldn't see me. And then we ended up writing um, the Lesbian Kiss episode. With Sandra Bernhard and uh, Marielle Hemingway? Marielle Hemingway and Roseanne kissed. Oh, right, right, yeah, right, so right. We wanted the, the story behind it was we wanted to challenge her character, and here she was, this really cool liberal. So what would happen if she actually kissed a woman? How would she feel, and how would her family feel, and all that that would entail? Um, so she reads the script, and we just can kind of hear, like, miles away, Oh, I wrote that script! Get down here! And we're, like, shaking. She wanted to see us, and she loved the script. And ABC was not going to put it on the air. They and that was enough for her to go crazy. Yes. They said, we're not filming it. She says, you're going to film it. And her and Tom were great. They said, we're filming it. We don't care. And then they said, all right, we're filming it, but we're not airing it. And they <laughs> said, we'll buy it back and put it on HBO. We'll buy time on HBO to do it. And we had a big benefit. I'm sure I invited you. At Studio One. I was and there. we had CNN. It was like hundreds of people mm-hmm. on the big screen. And we didn't know whether it was actually going to air because back then, you know, we didn't know. We didn't have cell phones. Right. And it came on and the whole place erupted because they'd never seen two women actually kiss. And it wasn't really it. very passionate. It was just a... It was just, it was just a just fact. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The only thing I regret that she did, which is interesting, she added it was not in the script. She wiped her mouth on her shoulder. And it got a laugh. But to me, I never That's, liked that because yes. I thought... It shouldn't be, I didn't like the yuck moment of it. It shouldn't no. be like, oh my God, I, I kissed a woman. Yes. I, so I, all, I begged them to cut that little part of it, and they never did. So that's the only little piece of it that I'm not that proud of, but uh, it but became at, a whole new but event. At the, but at the time, it was a big deal. Huge deal. It was yes. before Ellen, it was before Will and Grace. Um, and I, I don't even think, I, what year was it? So early 90s no numbers honey no er, numbers. Er, er, early 90s yeah something like it's that okay. I'm, yeah, I'm just sort of i'm sort of letting i'm trying to let really? that go teach now, me i have a new not boyfriend either. and he's a little younger oh, than that's me that's why and that's you why have a boyfriend. yes okay, and fine. i'm and shove it in all our faces yes and he's uh uh been saying to me it doesn't matter you know and he keeps saying it doesn't matter it, and he's and i say well it doesn't matter because you're younger yeah <laughs> it'll it, matter just wait. it will matter it'll one matter, day and you yeah. and you and and things you, fall and move on your body i got so many questions to yeah, ask you okay. my head is like is like first gonna, thing, yeah. yeah first thing best I'm not thi- leaving. best first thing on roseanne hours. and worst thing on roseanne getting the job and getting the job <laughs> It was terrifying. Um, was it your had, first big, big no, deal? No, we had done the first season of Golden Girls. That oh was, my God, of course. That was terrifying because I didn't know how to write jokes. I didn't think I was a joke writer and those mm-hmm. were some hard jokes you had to write. You worked with Jimmy Valet and all these really cool people. Uh, honey, we were before them. Oh, you were? Mark Cher- we were literally oh. there the first season. They oh were my just gosh. figuring it all out. It was uh, Mort, uh, Nathan and Barry Finero and Winnie Hervey. It was supposed to be a show. It was originally supposed to be a show about Jews and have a gay chef. That's Coco, what I heard. And then they cut him after the pilot. And Estelle was only supposed to be a little guest star. And, of course, she just blew up and was so funny. And they kept her and they, they got rid of Co- poor Coco. He's, he's who won. Yeah. Who was the actor? Um, um, that tells you. don't her. speak of him. Yes. Um, oh. Milk but it was sort of odd that you the didn't idea. Need the character, it was, yes. but it was odd that they had a. It, it was so sitcom e that you would have a chef in a house or four women. That yeah. how rich would you have to be? But it would have been nice if they kept him, kept him on as a best friend. Yeah, or, or bring something. him back. But once he was gone, he was he was gone. It, he it's went to Palm Springs because yeah. my my understanding from someone and from a couple people is the show is about Jews. And again, they said, "Oh no, no one's going to get Jews. We'll make them Italians." Well, that was when I first came to Hollywood, yeah. that was a big thing that, you know, people were scared of Jews. Oh, definitely. So it was always make them Italian or something. You can never do a show about Jewish people. Now you can't do a show about old people. Which but is so bizarre because 
Golden Girls is one of the biggest sitcom hits ever. Us. And everyone loves it. And I tell people, because I think you've heard about Silver Fox as the pilot, that uh, I got to tell you, gay men's gold I, I, I am so excited about this idea. I am too, and, if we and, can get it on, but I cannot I, get I would kill you. It. I would kill you and two other people to be in it. But don't kill me, because then I can't write and produce it. I would be play any part you want. Okay, and well I you would better come on it. And I would just, I would, it, it would, it would be, you know what, I, and I'm going to be, I'm not, oh, no jokes, and I'm going to start to cry, because... I can't even talk about it. It means because the idea to be in a show being written by a gay man in my age group and being cast by a gay man in my age group of everything that I have gone through from being an openly gay person from such a young age and the things that have been said to me to my face sure. by gay Casting men by gay agents. men by gay men in my age group. And you understand because I can tell by the look on your face, mm -hmm. it's it it would be it would be a gift of God that something like that would happen to somebody like me chill. i think that's why it's become not just a pilot to me but it's political <laughs> and when we first came here we were told you could not say you're gay to be on a writing staff oh. it's all very male and macho and i've had gone on panels at outfest and the young people can't believe they don't that get, that they don't they, understand there was a time oh, when you couldn't do it and it was you know the beginning of aids and like we went to um a yard sale of someone had died of AIDS and when they found that out they said burn everything people didn't know it was a whole whole different time so that's why this show means so much more to me and it is political and I'm not gonna rest until I get it made and I don't care if at the moment I can't get a major network person to read it with your and folks his credits are Golden Girls Gilmore Girls Rita Rocks Brady Bunch uh, movies. R Brady Bunch movies. Uh, Roseanne. I mean, this guy is major, major comedy uh, person. Because it's mostly, uh, I would say, 99% of the characters are LGBTQ. There's two power lesbians that live next door to the four guys, and they're always coming over and knocking on the beams because they're desirous to buy the house. And each season, they're going to buy and flip the house around till they get to their house. So they're really funny, and they're like Karen Walker. They're very... They're, you know, mm -hmm. out there characters, but I think that's going to be super funny. So, but I've been told, someone said, like, uh, well, how can you have a show with, uh, like, 99% LGBTQ characters? And I was like, would you say that to, about blackish? It's 100% black characters? You wouldn't say that out loud. But for some or reason... Or Latin or anything you know, else. So people feel like they can say it, or they'll say to my face. Literally, people that work at networks will say, well, the, all the characters are old. You're only going to attract old people. I'm like... You, you just said that out loud, first of all. And if you look at the model of Golden Girls, which is all we have, it attracted all ages, and so would this. And we have people like George Decay and Leslie Jordan involved. Like, that's going to, and it's gone so and Bruce viral. Valanche, and Bruce Valanche and Todd Sherry uh, um, did the reading in my living room. And it was, became so epic. I just asked them because I wanted to hear it out loud. Mm -hmm. And um, everyone kept saying yes. People kept talking about it. We were yeah. all upset we weren't there. Yeah. <laughs> It was, like uh, it was an epic afternoon, I have to say. And then now it's just gone viral when Huffington Post posted about it. And then National Enquirer and Howard Stern is pitching episodes. Well, I have to say is I have, I have a bigger fan base than some of those. Anyway, yeah, we'll be back uh, in just a second here at Absolute Jason Stewart with my new boss. Uh, <laughs> I love this lighting here. Stan Can I bring this with me we'll I'm be working? back in just a second. Please stay with us.
Welcome back to Absolutely Jason Stewart with my guest, Stan Zinnerman. Um, I, I'm so excited about this Silver Foxes TV show that I can't think about anything else. I do want to talk about both of our friends, and your much better friend of yours, Mindy Sterling. Who I, just, Mindy. who I just who got two Emmy nominations two in one year in, in the same category, yeah. which is now you know they're going to stop this because of this. Someone's going to say something because it's just they're going to go. Probably this Jane is Lynch. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> don't cross her. I'm not going to cross. That's what her. I'd, I'd like heard. to work with. Um, uh, so with Mindy, so yes. I, the first play I directed at the Celebration Theater. It was the 30th anniversary production of Gemini. Do you remember that? Show oh, of New course, yeah. I did that. That was my audition for the actor yeah, studio. Yeah, where yeah, I didn't get in. Oh my god! Yeah, the gay kid. Um, great play, and oh. it was the first time I had seen a gay character on stage, and I remember just being nervous in the audience. So when they asked me to direct my first play. I uh, chose that one. We worked together. I, w I don't know. Why. And I met crazy. Mindy, and ever since then, we've done like four or five different plays together. And then when I uh, was casting uh, Sex and Execs, I always had her in my head. Tell me, the whole, how long has this show been on? Tell me, every, tell everybody at home, because uh, I, I know all this. Sex and Execs is my second web series on telefilms.com. So what is Telefilms? It's the only uh, lesbian content website, and it's run by Kristen Baker, and she's wonderful. And the, wonder, the great thing about it is she can greenlight something. We made both of those shows, uh, Skirt Chasers and Sex and Execs. There's six webisodes each for $25,000. And we got amazing people. Skirt Chasers, we got Barry Bostrath, Meredith Baxter. We have Leah Delaria singing the theme song. Elizabeth Keener stars in it. And in Sex and Execs, we have Mindy, Olivia Dabo from The Wonder Years, Sandra Bernhardt. I mean... It's because everybody wants to work with you because you're so talented. I mean, that's what it really is. That is... that is. Don't even say anything. Don't do any jokes. That's just the truth. And the people want to work with you, which tells the executives out there that the whole idea is that you already have a whole thing. Of people and, and before you cast anybody you know they don't even get this I need to go in there and talk to them I had the you. reading I had a line producer to say how cheap we could do it I had a, a row of writing staff everything was there and we still mm. can't uh, but we're going to we're going to do it we're going to do it talk and, to and James Duff maybe he wants to do this show with you he's he's got maybe he's do got it something yeah he's, yeah. he's isn't TNT I mean, look, why isn't TBS. Brian Singer helping me out or like a Greg Berlanti because we're way too old for that oh <laughs> You know, we're way too old. We're just so past the expiration date. And even, you know, hey, hon, hey, yeah. hon. Yeah. You know, you get a hun? That's yeah. right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Brian Singer's always been. He, he, when I met him, I knew Jennifer Tilly was an old actress friend of mine. I like her. And I love her to death. And she um, crashed a party at my house with Brian Singer for a birthday party. I used to have these really big birthday parties. Don't invite me. Well, we didn't know each other. Okay, well, I didn't get invited know. to your Roseanne thing. Or my Valentine's Day parties. You know, I was kind of infamous for, I went through a really bad breakup and I decided Valentine's Day just like popped right up. It's the shittiest day ever. Horrible. If when you're single, oh so my God. I was going to reclaim it and you're I decided to have a BYOB, bring your own bachelor. And every person I invited had I to bring this a idea. single guy. And so everyone got to meet new people, and it was so did warm people, and Did anybody... Uh, they, they had some relationships and hooked up, you know, uh -huh. not like, you know... Was there a sex room or a back room? How or? dare you? This was a very classy... How dare you? This was a very classy environment right, at the right, party, right. yeah. Right. And, and it was funny, because some people that were in couples were like, we want to go. I'm like, no, you can't go, I mean, unless you're going to fool around with somebody else. You, I really wanted. Oh, you can you can go if you have an open window. No, window. <laughs> I really wanted to be single people to expand your circle of people you know. I I and wanted to do the same exact party. You and I are exactly like I'm calling you every five minutes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I I wanted to do this, but I never did it. I thought this would be a great party as everybody brought somebody so you would know because you must know people I don't know and I know exactly or that's what I wanted to yeah, do. Yeah. And the other great party which I was going to do and I chickened out was. Uh, my good friend Alan Poole, do you know him? Oh, of yeah, course. Six feet under. So we were going to have... Um, he has the best boyfriend. Ari is great. Yeah, they're married. I'm going to there. Oh, don't say anything. Okay. Uh, um, where's their wedding? I'm not saying. It's a destination. I'm not, okay. not going to um, Anyway, we were going to have a Mother's Day party, and everybody had to come dressed as your mother during her best phase. See, that's not fair. Mine would be so much... It, it's my mom is such, my, my mother is like an old showgirl. Well, you got to come as oh, a showgirl, God. and you had to bring her most famous dish, and a picture of her in that period. I think you should do a party where we could actually bring her mothers with us oh if they're God, alive. I don't think you want my mother there, but and we were gonna have a therapist on hand because we were gonna <laughs> need one for this one. So Alan goes, and this, oh, he was working on Six Feet Under at the time. He brings the picture to their wardrobe department. They build. 
No whole outfit. For That's it. not fair. I know because I was gonna have to go to a vintage store to get it, and then I asked all my friends. I just have to go to draw yeah, You just have to go to your closet, probably. Uh, yeah, her closet. Uh, uh, yeah. hmm. No, it's not, not gonna that. happen. There's yeah. no girl in me. There's no girl in you. It's so funny. There's just. That's why you need me on the show because okay. there's no girl in me. I don't want. There's just no girl in me. I gave it up. I, it, it, it never. It was just too weird. I'm one of those guys that just. I don't have the that that interest in it. Though I could do it. Mm -hmm. My my mine would be very Jewish, very prostitute. -y. Well, that's uh, <laughs> and very hairy. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> but we have electrolysis for that and lasering everything. Um, so all my friends said I I couldn't do it. It was too much for them. So I had to cancel the party. Alan had the outfit. We <laughs> did end up going to another party, a uh, big casting director at a Halloween party. And Alan made me drive. And he's in his mother, full head no. to toe. And for some reason, I chose like an S&M leather thing, which is very not me. <laughs> and we're driving down the 101. And I'm hearing thump, 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 thump. And Alan's going, it's just the rain. I'm like, it's the tire. I'm not getting out of the car like this. And he can't get out of the car. <laughs> This it, is an episode. It was a horrible of, of episode Silver of my Fox. life. But yeah. this is an episode of Silver Foxes. Yeah. Okay. This is it, seriously. It's yes, a great a episode. Halloween party. Yeah. It's a okay. great. Yeah. You want to write that one? I, See, I'm I, already I getting be, out of. I would be happy to come okay. in and ever punch up anything. I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I would. Well, be, don't say that because I'm going to start dragging you into punch up I would, stuff. I'm, okay. It's my best thing. Yeah. I I would love. I, I love. What I also love is the idea that when you can do scenes where people are talking about other things when other things are happening. Oh, that's the best. That's that's the thing I do best. I love that in life, and I love that in a movie. I love that. My favorite scenes when, in Roseanne was when Roseanne would come in and sit on Darlene's bed. Mm. And they would just have these beautiful talks. And we would just, it, it was just so lovely. It was one of the most best shows ever, I think, during the Tom Arnold years. And I hate to, I, and no, I, love, I give him credit. Uh, he kept it going. Something was special during that time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is too good. We're going to take a break here. We're here with Stan Zinnerman on my show. Absolutely, Jason Stewart will be back in just a second. Please don't change that channel. Oh my God, we don't have channels. There's no more channels. What do we do? He's absolutely Jason. He's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten up the darkest rainy day. Again, I am so fortunate, co-hosting with me, the owner of Hidden Streets of London, wall broker and urban art promoter, Danny Wood. What's up, Paul? How's it going? It's good to be back. Play-based artists exercising the power of words, sharing with the world motivational and inspirational messages, a writer doing time in Hollywood, Wordsmith. Woo! Hey. LA-based artists working on an international stage to spread positive messages paired with zany imagery. Make zany! getting read on a daily basis all over the world and for any writer that's just living the dream. So the, course, I'm putting up words that. that mean something to me and the fact that uh, they are resonating just with so many people Makes or just you with just the masses. You. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I actually thought superheroes did street art. Zany Miss Zany. What's, What's your oh. deal? <laughs> <laughs> wow. The corporate world. I was there for eight Ooh, years, and I wow. just was kind of like, "Fuck it, I don't yep. want to be there anymore." That's quit being a jerk to myself, <laughs> basically. And, and don't be famous British red post box, yeah. right? Now I'm guessing there's no permission given that. No. no. So parts do with like the, the monarch in terms of uh, you know, Elizabeth. So maybe that means she's a fan of street art. I don't know. Shouts to Liz, our queen. Yeah. <laughs> How do you do the wave? Oh, you, oh no, it's you like know how to do the wrist, wave. Wrist, wrist, elbow, elbow. I don't, don't know. know. I got no idea. You no. don't know how to do the wave? Oh, fuck would I? Great to see artists from a city so noted for its creativity coming all the way to London to brighten up a rather dull mm -hmm. summer. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? Great. Like Shakespeare says, words, words, words. Yeah. <laughs> And we're back. Absolutely, Jason Stewart here with Stan Zitterman. We're talking about uh, Roseanne again because there's just so much to talk about. And they were oh, doing yes. a Russian version of Roseanne. Yes, yeah, Sony was. And I got called to go to Moscow in 2015. 
and I was petrified being gay and Jewish. I had friends that literally were going to stand in the way at the airport of me going. Uh. And I was, please get another job. And But there was something, uh, uh, the <laughs> world just said, you're meant to go to Moscow. And I got there, I had an apartment, and I, I had a uh, driver with a BMW, and I had a translator who would just talk in my ear. I would have meetings, and wow. you'd be talking Russian. I don't speak a word of Russian. And I get there, and they I'm say... I'm Russian totally. I accent. I just can't talk ah, uh, language. Yeah, that's it. Not language. Nyat. And spasiba. Um, is that spice? or? Thank you. No, is yeah. This is something you put on? No, okay. nothing like that. All right. Go ahead. And um, I get there, and the first day they say, uh, your meet I thought I was a consultant. I will just sit in the corner and give my advice. No, you're running the meeting, and here are six directors you have to meet. And you have to pick one to direct the pilot. Yeah, a little scary. There was one woman, and they, they're they very honest there. They don't, like, here we're all nice. Well, but you know what it is? It's also because it's like in, I think it's uh, in Japanese or ch Chinese, only a thousand characters or something of the language where we are just have a much bigger language because our language is, is a conglomeration. But we're sweeter. They're cold there, and they're just going to... Well, so, because that's, that's the culture. But can you imagine going to an interview with me and one woman, the only woman director, sat down and she says, I don't think the show's very funny. I'm like, well, honey, you're not going to get the job like that. They just, they don't, <laughs> right. they don't. They okay, don't, next. Yeah, they don't next think person. like that. Thank but you. I really wanted to hire a woman, like, because there's, there's no, not many women directors. But I, we got a great guy, and I worked with the writer on the script, adapting it. No. Oh. Don't. Not yeah. from the Russian. But I went to gay bars in, in, in Moscow. I mean, you'd be surprised. I would be afraid to go. I was afraid the first time to go. and But I, I met some great, great, great people there. And I had a, a wonderful time. And I was involved in all these casting sessions. And the actors would start talking to me. And the director was like, Merikonsky, don't talk to him. And they would ask him, how yeah. does he know if we're funny or not? You just know funny. It doesn't matter what language. They would leave, and the director and I, I would say 98% of the time, agreed who to call back. You just hmm. know who's funny. So it's very, very interesting. So, so tell us about Golden Girls, because yeah. that that was your first big show. Yes. And you, work, you were working with... I did a with few episodes. I did an episode of Fame that Janet Jackson was on. Oh, my gosh. And she did her did first you work music with Robert video. Shearer? No. You know uh, who he is? No, Debbie Re Allen directed. Robert Shearer, who directed uh, a lot of them. Uh, he also directed Barbara Streisand, is happening in Central Park, Shirley MacLaine. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, where, where do I go from here? When, uh, her specials. And he, her, his daughter was my first girlfriend, and I've oh. known him since I was a kid. And was another there. one who wouldn't hire me because I was gay. But um, uh, yeah. <laughs> a lovely man, lovely man. And I used to be on that set all the time, thinking that they'll find me, you know. They I auditioned for the movie. Oh no! As, I went as the, the gay guy because in New York, where well, I was at NYU, being an actor, and they had the big cattle call, and I actually got which was called Lunchbox. Hot yes, lunch. hot lunch. lunch. Yeah. Yes, and then we all found out what hot lunch means. Uh -huh. Do you know? No. Oh, okay. Anyway, someone go go what find is, out what is hot lunch. Actual thing. Think oh. of, think wait, about wait, it. He's sitting here. Think wait about it. He is sitting here like he never has sex. Like through this pure sim. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I know. They're not buying it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I know. Because no I've heard about you. Oh, okay. Wow. So tell, um, tell us all about Golden Girls. B. Arthur, Rue yes. McClanahan, Betty White. Three of the biggest television icons get together to be on this show. It was. And it, the wonderful Estelle Getty, who I just seen in Torch Song Trilogy. York, on Broadway. Was here. Who is the yeah. youngest of the group playing the oldest. Yes. And Betty's the oldest, who's still and alive. And petrified because she had not done sitcom. So she was used to theater where you do the same script every day. Mm -hmm. Whereas in, you know, in a sitcom. And people we, didn't know she had Alzheimer's and she didn't know. And she had a lot of troubles no, with lines. So we all thought that she was just out in Hollywood partying because here she was a star at 60 something and not being home learning her lines. So if you look wow. at a lot of the scenes. And she must have been so completely. Because I went to a taping once and I thought. God, she looked panicked. Well, it's all in my book. <laughs> I'm going to write a book called the, the Girls from Golden to Gilmore. And uh, she was panicked, and she was going to therapy twice a week because she didn't know. We didn't know anything about Alzheimer's. No. Then. So if you look at a lot of the scenes uh, and she's eating raisins, it's because the lines are written on her hand. Mm. Now you're not going to be able to watch it. Um, no, no, but it's okay. People were difficult with okay. her. Yeah, and she felt very guilty about it. Like, why couldn't she remember like the others? But also remember the others had... We're trained in this way of, of you know, as writers, we'd mm -hmm. come in and give them a new joke, and they would just know it on the spot and just do it. And she couldn't believe 
Like, how do you have that skill? And it is a muscle you need to work out. Yes. And if you, when you're not a regular on the show, it's harder. Will and Grace was like that. Mm. I, I did two of them. It was like being on Survivor because they wouldn't include you in the process. And if you and are... Often they'd run over and like... Yes. Yeah. And, but, if you, you're, but if you're a comedian on a show and, you, and you're, there are other comedians like yourself, it's the hardest shows to do because you know what's funny on you and you know the way the arrangement of the words should be. But they mm. want to do what they think is yes. funny in their voice. And if you're guesting and you're, everything is done so fast. I did one with Glenn Close and she looked at me. She said, I've been nominated for four Academy Awards and I want to kill myself right now. <laughs> I, said, I, I said, let's do a double suicide. <laughs> well, we've done on our show, we did it on Rita Rocks. Um, Which was a brilliant, I have to say, Nicole this, this Sullivan. Sullivan, who I just adore. I, adore. I was in her pilot, Judy uh, Toll's pilot. Oh. I had a tiny, tiny part that Judy got me. Um, called me in my needs mm -hmm. and it was one of the funniest pilots i've ever seen nicole just has a way of taking your words but adding like a flower around it i was like how do you even think to do it she, i didn't even hear it the way she does it it just raises it to another level and to have her and tisha campbell martin and was oh no i thought sherry sherry shepherd was not on that no, that was that was another sherry, show you know, I, you know, I love sherry i did she did a, a reading of my play meet and greet in new york with Rachel Dratch, it was and Michael Yuri, she was just uh, everybody that you, I didn't work with Rachel, but I love Michael. I just did a film with yeah, him, he's a very good friend, a dramatic film yeah. with him. And uh, Sherry is an old uh, Sherry. And Michael's is, in a show now. Uh, um, Inspector General now it just moved to a new theater at the new state, new world stages, and just to the end of August. And then he's doing Torch Song. Yeah, I heard that. How great is that with Mercedes Rule? I mean, no one has touched that play, and but he's going to. No. He's playing the lead. <gasps> Michael's playing the lead. Oh, I didn't know. In September, you've got to go see of it. Of course. It's fantastic. I thought that Harvey was doing it no, again, and then no. he was playing the, the, oh my God. I know. Great oh, wow. Way to just re-envision it. Yeah. Wow. I can't yeah. wait to see he's it. He's so different. He's a great stage actor, and just, um, he, to me, is like the uh, Dick Van Dyke type. Just the well, way he uses his body, his physicality. Yes, yes. And he's, and he's, he's really embracing that. I'm glad he stayed in New And only by accident he's in New York, isn't it? Because of uh, Ugly Betty, when they moved it out there. Yeah, but he's a real New York. Oh, is he? He loves New York. Yeah, yeah. Him yeah. and his boyfriend yeah, right. slash husband yeah. played boyfriends in the film, in a film that I'm in where I play a detective. And he's, it's just happenstance that those characters are gay, which I just really loved. It's called uh, Diverting Eating Eden. It'll be out. It's That's a thriller. Cool. Yeah. He plays the, the uncles whose, the child is, it's an abduction film. And I play the uh, sidekick to the, um, I'm like a straight guy. Right, yeah, okay. I do that guy. By that. Yeah. And uh, it was really great to work with him. I just loved, 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 loved it. It was the highlight of the thing. So, okay. so Golden Girls, well, yeah. B. Arthur, who I just, I, I, I love B. Arthur. I was scared of her. I mean, she's just such a towering presence. Mm -hmm. And then as you, we got to know her, she was shy and Oh, scared. very. And, and I went to see her in Maud tape it one year, and I'll oh never forget God. it. She was standing off to the side, getting ready. I was a kid to go on, and she was shaking and going like this. And I thought, oh, my God. He, you know, how it, could B. Arthur be nervous? Right <laughs> after and, all and, that, and Emmy winning Maude. Yeah. I mean, just that was really the thing about her that she was incredibly vulnerable, and that she's the character on the show that I think I would, you know, if I would ever play, you'd want to be. Oh, yeah, because it's oh, honey, please, <laughs> Ma, <laughs> tell me I'm crap. <laughs> you know, it, it just she, the short kind of, you know, and their relationship was so amazing. Uh, the, the incredible story the first episode we wrote for Rose's mother when uh, Betty White's mother came to visit and she treated her like a child. Who and played a, it? Uh, Jeanette Nolan from Gunsmith. Oh my God, yeah, yes. That took all day. But anyway, <laughs> um, I could tell the other women were going like, come on, hurry up. Uh, but there's a beautiful, well, so two days before we were set to sh shoot, and you know you have five days from the table read and you shoot on Friday. Of course. Well, Wednesday, B. Arthur's real mother dies. Oh my God. Horrible. The producers were like, we're canceling the show. Obviously, you can't go and film it. And because she's a stage person, the show must go on. God bless her. She was not going to ruin it for everybody else. Also, she probably needed to do it. We didn't know that, but I actually just learned that. Um, oh, yeah. When so like she says, I'm going to do it. And there's a beautiful scene at the table, and she takes Estelle's hand, and she says, you know, Estelle takes her hand and says, you know, thank you for never treating me like a lady. And, and B can't even look her in the eye and the hair is on my arm stand up and i get teary because she can't look at her she just knowing what's going on in her 
heart and her mind. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful moment. So mm. I will always remember that. I remember the episodes on Maud when she would go to the shrink. She it was one or two episodes. The whole thing yeah, was her just that. in a shrink. It's online. It's really extra, an extraordinary actress. And in those days, they wouldn't let sit, specifically sitcom stars go into movies very much. It was yeah, very, so it was very rare, separate. Very, yes, very rare. Rec- couldn't do TV. No, no, no. I had so many times when I was developing at certain networks, I would want to get a recording artist. And they said, well, how can they be singer show? And of course, you know, then Reba does it and everyone does it now. Um, but, yeah. Well, Tisha came from movies. I work with her on my wife and kids. Oh, she's so fantastic. Just. Well, to hear her sing. So in my show, it's about a mom that starts a garage band. So here's who we took to the network for that role. Tisha Campbell Martin, Jasmine Guy, and Octavia Spencer. Those are our three choices. No, that was the problem. (laughs) (laughs) Those were our three choices. Like, you couldn't go wrong with any. But Tisha can sing like nobody's business. And just yeah. lights up a room. So there I got to be like every third or fourth episode to a recording studio to record a song that I got to pick and arrange. And there I am with Tisha belting it out. And she hadn't sung in years. Now she's gotten back into it. I'm so happy And she's for so her. extraordinary giving. I, did, <sighs> I played a shrink on that show. I don't know if you yeah, yeah, yeah. For years. And I would come back all the time. And she was... Incro- because Damon, you know, is 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 you know he's like the the, the tough dad, tough you know, yeah. and I've known him since I was a kid, and it was one of the just one of the most extreme jobs I ever and had. And no bullshit, Don, she Don, doesn't get involved in any of that. No. She just above it. And she was wearing a wig on the show. She, I said, "Got that? Where'd you get that?" She says, "Oh, I got it at Kmart. It was you know for nine ninety nine. It's great." She's been wearing. She wore it on the show for a year. <laughs> And she has Zen Lounge in Studio City. Her and her husband oh, I did not. have a great restaurant. And she sings there, I think, most Fridays. So if you can go, oh you've my got God. to go hear her sing. I mean, she blows the roof. Here with Stan Zinnem on, on absolutely Jason Stewart. We're going to look at some pictures and talk about more things in his career. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. and you're on the street you've been ripped off you've been used and you can be killed there is a way out there is a way off the street not tomorrow but now runaway hotline will get you off the street call runaway hotline toll free anytime day or night runaway hotline gets your message to those who care call now and get off the street I start. Hi, I'm Moxie. And I'm Nicole. And we're the ladies of Suicide, Suicide Girls, Girls Radio. Radio, the world's leading BYOB radio show. Pour a glass of your favorite tipple and tune in on Wednesday nights between 8 and 9 p.m. as we discuss life, liberty, and the pursuit of free nipples. I just flash it would be kind of funny, wouldn't it? People think flashing your tits is easy, right? And it's actually kind of hard. I like to sing, dance, pretend, and I like to have fun, 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 They thought it was great. All right, here we're back at Absolutely Jason Stewart. We're talking with my new best friend, Stan Zinnerman, and we're going to look at some pictures, and he's going to say, what's that? What is that? Yeah, what the heck? Oh, so this is a... Uh, it's not there anymore. Uh, here, And it's no signal. It's coming back. And there it is. is. So who's the guy? He's very cute. He's hot, isn't he? He has a crazy Golden Girls huge tattoo. No. 
Um, yeah, so these two, um, they have a, a podcast called Out on the Lanai, and but he has like a real like all the fo- you probably done it. Yes. Yeah. We'll make him show you. He's a nice Jewish guy. Who's the guy? The girl then? It, it wasn't uh, Joni March. Mar- Mar- uh, Marchinko. Marchinko. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, they're really. And they're like uh, Golden Girls freaks, and they're wonderful. Well, there's a lot of them. Yes, I know. I was at D23, which is the Disney Expo, last Friday, and uh, we had a big panel with uh, Terry Hughes, the director, and Betty White, very and she did not show, uh-huh. and uh, it was really, really sweet. And they had us all sitting on rattan furniture, very cute, and a room full of 1,600 people came to hear us talk. All different ages. All ages, and the minute they said Silver Foxes, they roared. They knew about it just from social media. I was oh shocked. Oh, God, I'm really sad. <laughs> Don't be sad. Oh, Lily and Allie Willis. It was this at the big party for the kids? Uh, no, this, a Mosaic? Yeah. No, this I, was a few years ago. And um, I'm in love with, and uh, we, we wrote a movie for her and almost got made, and that's how I met Lily. But I met her as a young child because she's from Detroit, and I was obsessed with Lily Tomlin. Who was it? Him. Yeah. And then you, I finally have, got have to you meet watched, her. Have you listened to her albums recently? So no, I, but I, I have all of them. I, I know she too. signed them. I went to the, the department store as a little child. I made my mother take me, and she signed them. And then she was in my living room in Hollywood. You should really listen to them again. There's something so insightful about it, especially wow. the Edith Ann stuff. Yeah. So insightful. She's it, it, just so smart, and I, I just adore her. And I, I do, too. I love to work with her. And Allie Willis is a very, very good friend of mine. Allie, Allie Willis, uh, if you don't know who she is, has written every hit song that you think you September, know. September Boogie Wonderland, the Friends theme song, and she's just... You go in her dear, house, dear. And, and it's like oh, it's a large, uh, award pink, pink. The MGM pink. old uh, party house, and all painted pink. And then she collects African-American kitschy things from the 60s which I have... Not just everything. I mean, I've given so her a lot of stuff, yeah, over the years. And I should give her my dad a lunchbox. Give it to her. Um, and I, I totally got lost in that oh. party. So show us another picture. We're not getting a signal, my dear. Oh, there... Oh! Where um, is this? I found this. It was an HBO something, and Stephen Jerome took it. It was a party when look, I first came to L.A. Look how sexy I that know. Is. It was just like two years ago. Your, <laughs> and, uh, did you, you blow dry your hair? Uh, no, I just wore a hat. Oh. <laughs> yes. Um, the older I get, the less curly. I used to have a whole Jufro thing going on, and then it just, the, I think the hair just got tired of me, like, yelling at it, and it's <laughs> like, this is what it is. And uh, Yeah, well, at least you got hair. Yeah, Next. there you go. Oh, what well, is I'm this? Kidding. So this was a woman show. I've directed three one-woman shows that I did at the Fringe Festival last year, and that was a picture of her and her mother, and I designed the... Uh, did I, also, you want- I like to design... The, my posters for theater. I'm doing a lot of theater. I'm doing a new play coming up with Melissa Peterman from Baby Daddy and Marissa Jared with uh, her. Oh, first I love her. from Hairspray, Tony Award winner, and it's her first non-musical play. And it's Justin Tanner. Remember him? From yes, Pop, I love. Mom. He just sent me an email the other day. Well, I'm doing Heartbreak Help, oh and my God. Uh, it's a, a wonderful play for women. Teresa Genzel and Sarah Gilman. We're going to do it for 15. Teresa Genzel too. I love oh, her. I, she was in my play. Uh, which, why didn't you come see that? Meet and greet. I had Vicki Lewis, Carolyn Hennessy. What is wrong with you? I don't know. Danielle Gaither? I mean, I don't know. You, you're just not a very good friend. I don't know. Yeah, you're a bad person. Bad, I'm sad. I sad. I know. Sad. I spend you can write my uh, stand up. I'm scared to do stand up. I, 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 I spend a lot of time depressed. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's three, three, three or four hours a day. I need, I, need my, I need my space. Okay. Next, show us another one. Oh, now I'm scared. Oh, Mindy. That's Mindy and Shirley Ralph. We know all this names. Shirley Ralph is a dude. She's great. So that was from Nymph a few years ago, and I created a, it's called It's On, and it's a TV theme song musical with a story, and we do over 40 TV theme songs within the show, but sung like a real musical. Try oh to work God. that out. And I'm dying to get it going, and I think I have some movement. Now, because I think once it gets going, like everyone loves those songs. What's your oh, favorite yeah. theme song that you like? Oh God, I think besides well, sir, Golden Girls, I was yeah, just yeah. that was my first one. I, got. I think the Brady Bunch probably. Well, we There's love nothing that better too. than that. And I, I also love Mary Tyler Moore. Yes, All in the Family. Buzz and Buddies. Buzz there and you Buddies. go. They're all in the show. They don't do and, them anymore. And she's they? and Shirley Ralph sings Wonder Woman. Uh, Mindy sang Good Times, and that was hysterical. She can sing, but to have Shirley Ralph from Dream Girls. Had Isn't great. it exciting that she's on Broadway? Yes, I saw her in Wicked. I just mm. I went to see it for the second time. The first time I saw it with Priscilla Preston. That I was working Priscilla on. Preston? I was working on a, a new musical based on her life with Elvis. How about that? And she took me to. I know, a crazy life, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that. Show was, us another. 
Oh, Wendy Malik. I love, and I, yeah, that's Wendy Malik there. And that was. the guy in the back. (laughs) I know. I was going, who is that? So that was during, um, for the Celebration Theater, they did a benefit, and they, Wendy Malik and the cast of Hot in Cleveland, including Betty White, read my first script from Golden Girls. How insane was that? And here I was, and I had to talk before it. And it was just shocked me that how I knew as a very young person to write about women and their feelings and mothers and daughters, I was like, Well, because right. I think it's probably what a gay kid wants. I think that with all, even the four golden <laughs> are partly half gay Some men. Said that, yes, well, it's yes. not. It's, it's the tr- television characters. Look at Tennessee Williams writing for the theater. Yes, that's true. He, uh, half of his, you know, are gay men. And also uh, Edward Albee, God bless him, uh, Virginia Woolf, that's a gay man. The, the child that won't does, allow that. Yes, but he's dead now. Yes. Speaking of plays, so Wendy is hopefully going to do, uh, I wrote a circumcision comedy play called Knife to the Heart, and we have uh, a theater in Chicago to do it in the spring, and she's been involved in a couple readings of it, and she is. All right, I'll do it. Stop all right, you'll do it. Fine. Stop. All right, next. Show us another. That was the cast of Roseanne. Oh, and, yeah. And, yeah, that was the, and now the whole reboot thing. Yes. So the wonderful thing, I don't know if this ever happened, where all four leads of a show won Emmys in different years for Best Actress. Uh, best uh, oh, Supporting. Best yeah. So thank God they all won. Like otherwise, it was there really would have been, been hell on the set. It would have been weird. Yeah. It was weird, though. But it was of course, folks, you all, or this is history, you already know, but uh, when Betty was offered the part of... Yes, it was supposed to be the, uh, the other way around, and they yeah. said, I don't want to do the same part again. That was very which Sue really, and Niven. Which really yes. opened up the whole, a whole career for Betty and yeah. certainly changed everything for... Yeah. Rue, yeah. Anyone? And have you been to the Rue La Rue Cafe in New York? Rita Rocks. Rocks. So this was a spec script we wrote, taking like the vibe of Roseanne, of a housewife. It's a garage band, and we, my writing partner Jim Berg and I, love music, and so we combined the two together, and that we wrote it on spec, and nobody would mm-hmm. would read it, and then Lifetime uh, was doing reruns of Reba and wanted an original show. They read the script, and we got to make. Tisha Campbell Martin yes. and Ravi Volman. It was just a great. Well, what I, about Lifetime? They should do this show. They, I can't even. Well, they Lifetime's should, not going to do a gay show. No. Oh God. They're not going to do half hours either. Yes, Virginia. Yay! There's Mindy again and Ellie English, and this is a play based on my mother and my housekeeper, a uh, longtime housekeeper, and it deals with my mother's dementia. It's really funny but wonderful and heartwarming, like Golden. I'll Girls. be in it. I'll and we're bringing it, it back. It. We did it in the spring to great acclaim. We're going to bring it back for the month of December. So look. Well, out you have for to that. put me on your mailing list. So uh, you're going to be know. there. I'm oh, go- you're I'll go. Be- I'll go. Yeah. I go to the theater all the okay. time. Okay, well, come to one drama. of my plays. Mostly drama. You need to laugh. I guess I do. Okay. This is so cool. I'm so happy to have you on Thank the show. Thank you for it's thinking really, really of me. really, really wonderful. Yeah, I'm back at Yeah, you. no, really, just wonderful. Uh, please, everybody, pray that this show, if people want to get a hold of you, how can they? ZimmermanStand.com. Oh, okay. And, and on all platforms. But please write Hulu and Netflix and uh, Amazon and say, we need our silver foxes. Yes, definitely. And only if I'm in the show. Yes, of course. Yeah, don't do it otherwise. All right. If you can't find him and you forget his name, just go to jasonstewart.com, S-T-U-A-R-T. Thank you guys so much. I'll talk to you next week. Take Oh, I forgot. Thank you, Brent. Oh, here it is. I'm going to be at the uh, Laugh Factory doing a really cool show called Comedy Realness, uh, hosted by the wonderful Aiden uh, Parks. Uh, on August 1st right here in Hollywood at my favorite club The Laugh Factory please come I feel like Bill Maher now at the end of his show except I didn't don't say anything bad I was like, yeah, didn't be say careful. anything weird and everybody take care and uh, talk to you next week bye he's absolutely Jason he's absolutely gay he'll absolutely brighten up the darkest rainy day he's funny and loves movies he's smart and he's a Jew He's an actor and an activist and wants to hear from you. He's absolutely Jason, he's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten up the darkest rainy day. He's funny and loves movies, he's smart and he's a Jew. He's an actor and an activist and a